Okay, this is Steve Melendres. Um, I'm just going to show you some little teeny things that help me to spice things up. And sometimes it's just little techniques um, just to heighten stuff. Uh, I'm going to start over here. And, um, okay, so this is a sea anemone. It's I'm going to just kind of pull out the color a little bit and blend. These are very subtle little things, but um, for me it, it just punches things a little bit further out. And you can see it's just subtle little things. It's softening the edges. It's adding more definition. And it doesn't take long. Well, it, for some people, it, you would think it takes long. But it just helps so much with the detail or the illusion of detail. So what I did is I came in with a yellow ochre first and then added an umber to the bottom so it would get darker right, like right in here. And did some blending. And after that, I just kind of started blending more. And you can see, it doesn't take much just to kick it up a notch or two. And, and sometimes those are the little magic areas that just kind of... For me, I could live on one little area of a painting where I just like it so much that everything else is secondary because of just what happened to the work in that little spot. You know, it could be just a highlight or a blending of the colors that, that bled into one little section. Now this is actually the third part of this painting. Um, I did did a beginning stage and just started with one of the angel fish on the side. Um, giving it about, oh, I would say 50% on the video because it did take much longer. But that, that one would have more detail than anything else. Um, but sometimes I, you know, like I'll just do one thing that was super, as far as I can push detail, so people could see the possibilities of how far you can take watercolors. Now, some people, again, like I said before in the previous videos, will hate my work uh, mainly because it goes with everything they believe in about watercolors, which is no detail. The illusion of capturing something with one stroke and like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not my style. And that stems back from what I used to do for a living is work as a scientific illustrator for the Natural History Museum. So um, I was forced to do that. So I can't help it. It just washes over me detail. Now, I will admit that what colors is the most difficult medium there is and most artists are afraid of doing watercolors and i don't blame them i was one of those people where it was just like oh no this is ridiculous how, how could you paint with this stuff um so i kind of got to this point, not just like looking at one video and saying, okay, well, I know how to do it all. Uh, that, that would be awesome. I did everything with acrylics because if I made a mistake, I could always paint over it. Um, this means with watercolors, um, you got to think ahead of the game or if you mess up or do something that 
doesn't work for you, you've got to think, how can I alter it to save it? And then that's another fear of a lot of people that hate watercolors is they know that fact. And if they don't feel comfortable in it, it's like a waste of their time. And, and I don't blame them. You know, it's kind of, you know, hey, you know, if you fall down in a dirt bike, you know, 80% of the time, you may want to give up the sport of a dirt bike. Um, but um, this is one of those things that once you get comfortable, and you have to make a lot of mistakes to get further, and I have uh, a pile of paintings I, that I failed. Um, and I don't know, maybe someday I'll show the failures so it doesn't look like, oh, it's, that's looked real easy. All you do is you do this and pull out the color there and you highlight and you blend and, and you do those things. And, oh, that's easy. Um, no. Now I'm going to come in to this little area, right? I might zoom in a little bit here, so. Um, now, I'm going to do the same thing. I, I'm going to come in with a little bit of water and blend out this. And, then, and I would be doing this to all these little things here. I'm not going to do anything with this. This is kind of like maybe be in the shadows. So I'm just going to leave that. So you want some extreme dark spots along with the light. And put kind of a little bit of an illusion that there's fish here. Um, I'm going to probably zoom in real cl close and then... Now, when I'm zooming in, again, you have to understand, you know, this is my thumb. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much making paintings on my thumb. Um, so this is not the way you would normally see it. Um, so, and this is only one side of it. So there's some fish that went over, um, and I explained the technique on that. This is the latest thing that I was working on, and I'm, I'm really close on there, um, but what I'm going to probably, and this is all about putting the color down, blending, pulling out, blending, pulling out, and then like what I would do on this, is just pull a highlight and blend and and I know this is tedious work but for me when I see that it gives it such definition there's a roundness to it and it's not that difficult I'll have to say that because it isn't I'm just coming in not with a super wet brush I'm coming in with a brush that I wiped off uh, the excess water so it's just a damp brush but that little highlight just adds so much more to something that people would just overlook and just move on but you can see just spending another few minutes in one little spot how it just comes to life how much time are we on Okay, um, I'm just going to do a couple more right here and then um, go to the other side. I don't want to keep these things too long. Um, another thing I'm doing too, <laughs> which is just the way my mind works. Now this one I may put a, just a little dash of white in the blue. Um, it's, while I'm painting, I'm thinking of the next painting. What did I include on this? How can I push the next one a little further? What can I do? Um, so 
So I already have the concept in my mind of how and what I'm going to be doing. Doesn't mean it's going to turn out like what's in my mind. That never happens. But just the idea is there. Now I, I'm putting little highlights in here instead of pulling it out. Same technique. But um, these colors will fade because that's what watercolors does. Um, now I'm going to probably switch to the other side. Okay, so I'm on the, on the other side now. Um, I'm not going to show the fish, or the angel fish that has a lot of de detail up there because that's the first one anybody's seen. Um, can you see this? It looks like you can. It's going to make sure you can. Because sometimes one, I think it's in, in picture, it just is eliminated. Okay, so this is I'm going to show kind of how I did the coral here. And like I said before, it's all the same thing. Um, and I'm not going to be able to do all this little background, but it'll give you the idea how I did this side from this. Okay, so I just laid down the purple. This is a darker one, so I could give you the underside. I could do a highlight. So now I'm going to go in there. And you can see it doesn't take long. This is a little bit more of a damp brush. Um, and it, that blending gives a roundness to it. Now, if I want to put a little bit of a highlight on the tip, that will have a lot of different effects, like it's coming out at you. Um, add more to the brightness of this specific coral and it, I'll just do a little one on the bottom so you can see kind of it's not going to be as bright as that and what I'm doing is overlapping when I overlap it just puts this one in front of this one um, so you can put them all down and then decide which one is going to be on top and which one's going to be on the bottom now I'm not going to do too much to this I'm just going to wet it a little bit and maybe make a a darker highlight that's not going to show up too much. So still keeping this dark, but just have a slight highlight. Now, I would go into this a lot more, and I don't have time to do that, so I'm going to do kind of a, a little bit of a quick version, but so that you can understand um, how this process works, because I'm not trying to... I'm trying to teach the techniques and um, I don't spend 20 minutes or an hour on one thing. I spend days on things and some of my other projects a long time. So it has these little kind of little bumps on the coral so I'm just kind of Going over them on the edge just to roughen the edge. And for time's sake, I'm just going to come back. I would just go all the way down. And then I would just slightly just tap it. Now, that highlight will still be there. I didn't completely cover it out. But in the same direction, I will come back over because if you look, it has those little white um, parts of the coral or the lighter spot, um, and that helps pop things out. So. Now this white should eventually disappear or get lighter because that's what watercolors does. That's why I have to go into so many different um, layers because I, I, I'll put it to a spot and it's like, oh, that, that's exactly the way I wanted it. 
And then half hour later, I'm looking at it, and it just is like 50% of what I thought I wanted. So I would have to do more layers and wait, and more layers and wait, and more layers and wait until it gets to a spot where I was happy. Okay, now you can see the difference between that and that. And, and that's the, the way I would do this work. Now, let's see if I can come in some. Okay, so uh, the lionfish. Now, I, in my other, how much time do I have here? Okay, I'm getting close. Actually, I'm over. Um, but I think it's important I explain this. Now, I kind of went over this when I was doing the blending. It wiped out my drawings. So I had to go back over. Now, the lionfish, there's all kind of different species and colors and variations. And if you get close to it, you'll know it's a lionfish. Now, some have dark areas. Some have kind of reddish brown. Some have more dark. Some, it's, I mean, it, 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 they just change. Uh, but most of the time they have this really strange looking face. It actually comes out like this and then it goes down slopes and then it's like these front part of the lips or whatever pop out. Now, um, these pec fins, I still need a lot more work in them um, and that's just because of me. But you can see the small little details and they have like these little, almost like little horns growing out. Um, same thing with these. Um, now. The way I did that is the same way as I've been doing everything. I would go in I would, with a paintbrush that's damp and then make the spikes in there. Uh, then I would go in with a lighter brown. And just to give it volume, because they do have that also, is come in, as you can see right here and right here, with a darker um, brown. And that is what they kind of look like. Now, I went a little bit lighter over here because they're... A little bit further in the distance. Um, technically, I, I didn't leave it uh, just with pull out the color. I did go in there with a little bit of white to make it pop out. And of course, these have really unusual little folds. So I kind of followed that. So these are not done. So these two, and maybe this one's done. I'll have to work on this backside and the bottom. And you can see there's kind of like a little bit of a blue shadow in here. And I do that on purpose when I'm thinking and drawing. Um, so, like I said, this is about maybe 80% now. Uh, I, I'm not going to touch this because I'm just going to leave a kind of a sandy white area. Did some blending into it, but um, I just don't want to cover the whole thing. Anyway, so um, Steve Melendris out. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm going to be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's going to go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm going to be doing videos, uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now. So I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.